afternoon's uh, webinar on uh, HDB through technical lenses from 1974 to 2018. Now it spans a good four decades of uh, evolution within HDB. Our speaker is none other than uh, engineer Tia Li Yong. He was the former deputy director of HDB in the project management section. Engineer Tia actually uh, graduated from the then University of Singapore in 1974 with a Bachelor of Civil Engineering. Uh, since graduation, he joined HDB as a civil engineer. Uh, he started, or rather he spent 22 years providing civil engineering infrastructure to new towns at the beginning. Then from 1996 to 2003, he was involved in HDB, I think you call it the MUP, which is the main upgrading program. Thereafter, he moved to leading the uh, infrastructures maintenance and project management as HDB transited to a housing authority in 2003. Altogether, he spent 44 years working at HDB, retiring as the Deputy Director of the Projects Management Section. Now, with his wealth of experience within HDB, he will be able to give us a, a deeper insights into the growth and transformation of HDB up to today. I'm proud of what HDB has done for Singapore, moving us from basic housing in the early years of our nation to present day integrated and thematic developments with parks, modern amenities, and connectivities. So let us welcome engineer Tia to give his talk. He will take the stage for the next 40 minutes or so, and our Q&A session will follow thereafter. Engineer Tia, uh, the stage is yours now. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, very good afternoon to everyone, uh, both students and uh, alumni members, uh, I see quite a number of my own classmates and uh, some other uh, fellow uh, past colleagues as well as friends. Uh. So a very warm welcome to you and for really spending this hour or so uh, to hear my uh, stories. <laughs> okay. okay, let me just share screen. Can you all see? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I titled my sharing today to be HDB to Technical Lenses, 1974 to you know, 2018. That is uh, October 2019. Um, that is because uh, <clears throat> we come from our alumni, uh, we actually alumni of uh, NUS. Uh, it's just that we joined at the time it was called uh, University of Singapore. And we, you can say that the batch of uh, ex-students, uh, we still meet together uh, infrequently nowadays. Uh, and for the past uh, 45 years that we've been around, and this is how we think we can pay it forward by sharing with uh, NUS. Uh, this talk that I'm giving uh, this afternoon. Just uh, one or two caveats here. First and foremost, uh, I'm not representing HDB. I'm a retiree uh, doing what I enjoy doing now. But uh, in sharing the past achievements, uh, it is my hope uh, that the next generation, that means you know, the students that are attending NUS now, can <clears throat> uh, build upon you know, the achievement that we have made in the past no? and use it as a benchmark no? for or a challenge no? to move forward. So as I said here, is to inform, to instill, and to inspire no? the students no? of NUS. Okay, so this is, <clears throat> this is our class in 1974. We <clears throat> were 88 strong. Quite a big class, you know? uh, 
civil engineering with four girls, only two were in, uh, in the picture here. About half, almost half of them are from Malaysia with uh, many ASEAN scholars, right? And we share the premises with uh, this uh, Singapore Polytechnic at the Prince Edward Road campus. Uh, some of you may not know where this is, uh, but it's opposite uh, NTUC Conference Hall. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just give you an overview, right? And that is, uh, after working for so long, uh, I recognize that there is such a thing as a packing order of construction industry. What do I mean? Uh, what it means is that you know, if you happen to be working in government or authorities uh, like HDB uh, you know, or JTC, you, know, uh, <clears throat> you, are, you are actually uh, at the top of the packing order. Meaning that you, know, you, you, know, you have the authority to uh, put out contracts, you have the authority to actually decide on things that needs to be done. Okay? And of course, it's followed by the consultants, which I believe they work very closely, or at least should work very closely with institutions of high learning, uh, because they still continue to do design and so on. And <clears throat> of course, not followed by the contractors. You know? As far as I can see down here, you know, the only thing I want to comment here is that there's always a danger of policy and decision makers, uh, what we call the technocrats, uh, of not having practical experiences. Okay, I'll expand on this further as we go along. Okay, there is there must be you know uh, a matching of people who are in authority who knows what is on the ground. Uh, their constraints and their needs. And this is something which, you know, if we just have the authorities uh, just knowing, you know, just the technical things, but not having few experience, uh, uh, there can be a danger there. Okay. What I showed to you at the bottom of the slide is also one of those trivia. Uh, I think for us uh, in our days, uh, over that, you know, 44 years and more, uh, uh, since school days, uh, we have gone through logbook, then to slide rule, then to mainframe, then to personal computer and laptop. And of course, nowadays, you also have your, this, uh, you don't need a personal calculator, you just have your handphone. So that is the, <clears throat> what we have gone through over the 40 over years. Uh, okay. And I still remember the times when, you know, we were using <clears throat> this, uh, uh, this uh, for the mainframes, uh, we have to make programs now uh, uh, through <clears throat> uh, all this card system, uh, and it was a real pain uh, because every for every small errors, we have to go back up uh, to the uh, computer center again. So, this was uh, something which I think the new students would not have to go through. Okay, for today, my coverage, huh, I will be on civil engineering and infrastructure construction over the years, okay? Organization and functional changes in HDB, special developments, no? okay? Main upgrading program, project management, MS project template, and a look to the future, <coughs> okay? Um, it's quite a lot, and some of it, no, I would probably move across quickly uh, in the interest of time, but, uh, I will just give you a flavor of what I'm trying to share. Okay. Development of all sea infrastructure in the new towns, including coordinating resettlement and services department. Okay. So this is something which uh, <clears throat> I would say, uh, that's what we, we do when we were in civil engineering department in HDB in those days. No? We were <clears throat> uh, initially involved you know, in in uh, the three main towns you know, in HDB of uh, Amokyo, Bishan, and, and this uh, Clementi, right? And basically our role is that, you know, we actually coordinate on diversion as well as, you know, laying of services as well as, you know, resettlement of squatters also, and then coordination of all the other you know, authorities for the construction of roads, you know, drains, sewers, you know, even planting of trees, you know? Uh, so we practically deal with everybody, okay? So this is where it all started, uh, 
the three main towns of uh, Amokyo, Bedok in the east, no? and Clementi in the west. Okay. So that was in the 1974. And these are the areas that we covered, earthworks and reclamation, piling, you know, drains and sewers, you know, okay? major and minor roads and bridges. Okay? Uh, as mentioned, you know, we, we did a lot of coordination with both the services department as well as authorities, including even people like JTC. Of course, not forgetting the contractors, because at that time, you know, we were doing everything. Yeah? That means we plan, we design, you know, we supervise you know, the construction. Of course, we call the contracts also. Yeah? So in fact, for the calling on contracts, you know, we develop our own HDB condition of contracts uh, as against uh, uh, the government, you know, public sector you know, standard condition of contracts. You know? So we are doing things quite big time in that sense. You know? In fact, <clears throat> uh, because of the big volume of government expenditure, we also attract the attention of uh, the Auditor's General's Office, who incidentally, these are some of the trivia that I can share with you, have a permanent office in HDB, all right? AGO does not, not normally have a permanent office uh, in government uh, of, uh, bodies, okay? So for earthworks and reclamation, you know, we were involved in massive transport of cut and fill in HDB towns, right? Starting with the ABC towns, as I mentioned, okay? And earth from towns like Bedok and Tampines were also used in the reclamation of East Coast Park. Okay. And <clears throat> this involved, as I say, you know, massive movement of, of soil, which also result in the reclamation of East Coast Park. Okay. And <clears throat> there were large earthworks companies uh, in the likes of Hyapshing, Kyongsing, which used uh, scrapers, which one will never again see in Singapore context. So this is what I mean by uh, the, the, the context of the works that we use. Uh, okay? I'm supposed to have some of the pictures, it doesn't seem to be coming up. Okay, this is, this is the, <coughs> the earth scrapers that I was mentioning about. Okay? You, the, you probably can only see this now in probably in Malaysia, you know, Indonesia, and maybe Australia. Uh, but definitely in, in US, uh, because this is a US uh, machine. Okay, because these scrapers can actually cut uh, <coughs> uh, uh, up to 24 cubic meters uh, each time. Uh. So in a sense, uh, a whole precinct uh, can be leveled in a week. So it doesn't give much time for the architect uh, to change their mind uh, once the contract is called. In fact, whole hill can be flattened within a week uh, and the landscape is totally changed, okay? And as I say, you, you never will be able to see these machines again. And a bit of trivia here, and that is, uh, during the time when we were involved in Amokyo, right? The army used to do topo, you know, these are, you know, these are training, you know, to, <clears throat> and they moved through Amokyo using Ching San Road, you know? But by the time they reached, you know, the outskirt of Amokyo, uh, they are totally lost, you know? Because when they look at their map, huh, they are trying to locate the temple in the middle of Amokyo, uh, but they are all being dwarfed by all the high-rise flats uh, that are already there. So I think after some time, the army decided uh, that they shouldn't be doing topo uh, uh, in that area at all. Okay. So these were bulldozers that were used in those days, which also you don't see nowadays. Huh? Uh, nowadays, you probably only see excavators. Huh? So uh, loading onto lorries. Okay. okay, reclamation. Reclamation is very big time you know, for HDB. Okay, there was a report, this straight time report not taken, uh, written in 2015 about a development 50 years ago in 1965. Okay, written by this lady called Teresa Tan. Okay, and it says the housing board started preparatory work for the largest reclamation project, which is the East Coast project. Okay. And this is what the <clears throat> then Minister of National Development, Mr. Lim Kim San, have to say. He says, we have been changing Singapore's skyline. This project will change our shorelines and map. And I think if you look at the map of Singapore nowadays, right, yeah, you will understand what, what it means. Okay? Okay? So 
in this project, right, and when, it, when it's finally finished uh, in 1985, it added 1,500 hectares of land for housing, reclamation, and other users. Okay? Cost the government over $600 million. And I can say that it is worth every dollar to spend uh, for the citizens of Singapore who can enjoy you know, uh, the benefits. And of course, not forgetting you know, each you know, square meter of real estate being generated through the reclamation, I think it's worth, well worth that 600 million. Okay. So again, these are <clears throat> some pictures in sepia that you probably you know, will not ever see. Uh, this brings back, I think, very sweet memories to those uh, alumni and colleagues, ex-colleagues of mine in HDB who were involved in these projects. Okay. This is the <coughs> HDB annual yearbook of 1974-75 when I first joined HDB. Uh, I think the, this is the first time that you know, the civil engineering works you know, is used as a backdrop, you know, as a cover rather, you know, for the annual report you know, against uh, the blocks, you know, I think in this uh, Marine Parade. You know. So most of the time, HDB annual reports are about it, housing. This is a whole stretch of uh, this uh, East Coast Park. <clears throat> and not forgetting, you know, uh, even what you see in Garden by the Bay, right, is on reclaimed land. Okay? And I think kudos to the government for being willing to, you know, to sacrifice or use you know, such prime you know, uh, land uh, for the benefit of residents as a whole, okay? I think for any one of us who have been to, you know, this like Garden by the Bay would, would appreciate, you know, uh, what the government has done as far as, you know, uh, public spaces are concerned. So this is a, a view of the, some of the recommendations done. Uh, uh, this is not updated, as I say, you know, I retire, like, so... <clears throat> not able to assess you no know, latest information. Uh, this picture does not include, no? although it includes uh, the West Coast, Southern Islands, Pulau Tekong, and Ubin, no? and even the Tuas Hockey Stick, no? but one area is missing, <coughs> okay? And that is uh, the Changi, no? this uh, airport reclamation. No? If you look at the latest map of Singapore, you'll find that you know, there is another appendage, no? No? in the east, just like what we have you know, in the west. Okay, next I'll touch on piling. We do different types of piling, or the, no, there are different types of piling, different percussion, both mechanical and diesel, about piling, case on, uh, as well as <coughs> there are different types of piles you know, being used. All this we have seen you know, in the course of our time in HDB, right? And <coughs> What we can say is that the progression from noisy to polluted diesel percussion to quieter board and check-in paths no, is again something which uh, is history. No. I can only share it with you in words, but you will not experience it no, in, in real life. Okay. So we have seen the likes of big no, paling players like Penta Ocean, Samchong, Econs, Singapore Paling, who were awarded no, term contracts for carrying out each. No. Uh, amongst of uh, piling in HDB estate. No? The last picture I have down there is a picture of a soil investigation machine. Okay, uh, this this picture right here. Okay, <clears throat> again I would like to make this point here that no, uh, HDB would probably have a map of uh, Singapore's uh, geological this uh, terrain. Uh, uh, better than any organization or company in, in Singapore. Because we actually built them uh, all through the island, except of course, maybe the catchment area. Uh, and for every job that we did, you know, we would do soil investigation. Okay, So this is <clears throat> something which uh, uh, is with the organization uh, until you know, uh, it was corporatized. Okay? And if I may say so, that, that you know, for Paling, if you can actually see the uh, geological 
uh, terrain uh, of Singapore, you probably will be able to see a uh, Singapore or the HDB in reverse uh, in the geological landscape uh, because of the piling uh, uh, that we have done uh, for all the HDB uh, flats that we have built. Okay. So we do drains and sewers also. Okay. And uh, I have, I think, for this afternoon, no, my good friend Yap King Guan no, with us this afternoon, I think he has shared with you all in the last month sharing. He's uh, in charge of, uh, I think, uh, drainage department at that time. But for us in HTB, I dare make the claim that you know, we, we probably have built more drains and sewers uh, uh, than the authorities uh, because of the coverage that we, that we do. Right? And we have seen that from the very primitive open cut hoardings to timber, uh, border tunnel sewers construction to pipe jacking for small to medium sized sewers. Of course, we don't do the big one, but <clears throat> as I say, you know, we would have done no, most of no, uh, the rest. So in terms of uh, capacity, I think we have done a lot. Okay. So for roads, likewise, we dare to make the claim that we built more roads than PWD LTA based on our town coverage again. Okay. And <clears throat> this is because again, no, we do town planning of the roads to design to calling a contract and actual supervision of road down to the details of the roadside drains and tree planting. Okay. <clears throat> it will be more apparent when I show you this picture of uh, HD, uh, Amokyo. Okay. You can see that the, all the blue, this uh, <clears throat> hatch tarps uh, are actually roads that have been built in, H, uh, in Amokyo town by HDB. The only roads that are built by PWD LTA are the peripheral road of Yochukang, right? Amokyo Avenue 1 and Central Expressway. Other than that, no, all the other roads within, uh, within Amokyo is built by us. And if I may draw attention to this uh, red rectangle here, okay, let me zoom in to show you <coughs> that this is a, a replica of probably a design drawing that we make uh, for our roads when we construct them. And we actually drill down to the actual, uh, that's our draftsman, no? we'll drill down to actually indicating no? the, the number of trees at the intervals. No? And <clears throat> for every icon of the tree they draw, right? Uh, it will be transformed in time to come <clears throat> to an actual tree on the ground, okay? So this is how I, <clears throat> in my conversation with draftsman, no? encourage them that no, they are also making a contribution no, uh, to the uh, landscape of the uh, whole of Singapore. Okay. Uh, from time to time, we, we do go down to visit the site with our draftsmen. Okay. <clears throat> so next, I'll cover the organization and functional changes in HTB. Okay. <clears throat> it can be seen in just uh, no, three stages. That's from 1974 to 1990, we actually developed from six departments to seven, incorporating a building and project management department in the building division. Then from 2003 to today, uh, from being a full-fledged housing and infrastructure construction entity involved in all the works, right, <clears throat> to being a housing authority for public housing in Singapore. Okay, so that is the change uh, that we have made. So you can roughly see in this field organization chart that I'll show you, right? <clears throat> this is from 1974 to 1990, uh, from seven, from six departments to seven departments uh, in the building and development division, okay? So this is the addition of building and project management uh, in 1990 to 2003 when HDB was corporatized, okay? <clears throat> so this is, from 2004 onwards, in which the building group <coughs> has been sort of a group to become uh, functional groups rather than you know, technical discipline groups. You know? So <coughs> this is from the yearbook uh, in which you know, that structural, major structural change was made in 2003. 
Okay. <clears throat> so I have written on the side, on the right side, you know, uh, what it means. Uh, okay. So we are from seven you know, technical discipline structures you know, collapsed to four you know, with, uh, functional you know, departments. Okay, next I just want to share with you uh, both in terms of trivia or at least you know, in how I look at, you know, at things because of my over 40 years of experience. Huh? Uh, <clears throat> it is said you know, that an institution is but the length and breadth of one man. By that, you know, what it means is that <clears throat> uh, any organization right, you know, uh, will take the cue from the top man, the CEO, okay? And it is not <clears throat> surprising that every time a new CEO comes in, right, they will always you know, uh, come up with his own concept of what is needed for the company. Most of the time, they will not just follow you know, what is being done in the past, okay? And <clears throat> with that, uh, I just want to show you the... Uh, the number of CEOs that I've served, okay? Starting from Tae Chiang you know, in 1974, to Liu Tai Ke, to Chuan Kong Yong, to Lim Hang Kiang, Mo Siu Meng, Tang Ban Ching, Peter Chan, you know, Yam Chiang Meng, Yu Tak Yu, Tae Kim Po, Xiong Hung Hien, sorry. <clears throat> so altogether, 11 CEOs, right? And <clears throat> I'd like just to say that the number of years that we have technocrats like Tae Chiang Wan, Liu Tai Ke, and Chong Kun Hien, you know, uh, HDB you know, uh, has really grown because of you know, the continuity that were there. You can see most of the time, right? They spend long years there. Okay. And the other sort of interesting trivia I have for you here is that you notice that you no, know, we also have ministers you know, in, in HDB before, right? We have Lim Hung Kiang in 1991, Liu Tak Yu in 2004. Okay. And <clears throat> you'll notice that you no. Know, because HDB is so big and so varied, it's much bigger than many you know, ministries uh, that uh, the political masters see fit uh, for, to send some of you know, these candidates uh, to HDB you know, to have a feel of what it means you know, to look after you know, uh, government organizations. Okay. So again, this is taken from a uh, yearbook. This is taken in March 1989, huh? in which I was still in the civil engineering department. Okay. <clears throat> so in terms of strength, huh? this uh, staff strength, in 1989, you know, you're talking about 8,500 people. Huh? And with the daily rated, you're talking about 12,000 over. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> in 2003, uh, just before uh, capitalism, we're talking about 7,008. And after uh, the building development division of Haifa, it drops down to 5,000 uh, over staff. Okay. So that's, that is the rough things of things. <clears throat> okay. Uh, this slide, I must give credit to uh, this person called Theo Lida. Now, if you Google him on the internet, you'll find him. He's an interesting person who is interested in housing and he compiled a lot of statistics, okay? So I have to give credit to him because I took this slide uh, from, his, uh, uh, from his website, <coughs> okay? So these are the number of dwelling units uh, and commercial property built by HDB over the years, okay? So I just want to let you know <coughs> of uh, two, two areas. Uh. One is from the period about 2003 to 2000, okay, maybe 2002 to 2010, in which you know, we built very little flats. That was because there was an oversupply. And the oversupply was because of the way in which we, <coughs> uh, we sell our flats then. Uh, it was just by a queue system, okay? Unlike nowadays whereby you, know, you must indicate your interest first in the specific area. And if they are more than, <coughs> uh, I think 75%, only then we will build. If there's not no interest, no, we will not build, okay? 
And <clears throat> the other area of interest is uh, in the 1980s, uh, in which you can see that, you know, we, you know, and I was involved during those periods. Uh, uh, it was it was hectic time, okay? Uh, you can see the, the peak, we were building, se completing 70,000 units of flats in a year, okay? And of course, you know, this also give rise to you know, complaints uh, by people about you know, the poor workmanship uh, uh, of, the, of the units in that, uh, of that period, okay? <clears throat> so this is another slide by him about the flats in the different new towns. So at this time, uh, maybe I just have a quick show of uh, a quick response from you all so that I, I can see whether you, know, you all are still with me or you, maybe you all went up somewhere. <laughs> okay, 80% of our population stays in HDB flat, okay? <clears throat> so maybe you all can show in the chat uh, uh, where you live in, okay? If you uh, happen to be in HDB, you can pull HDB, right? <clears throat> if you happen to be in landed, you can pull landed. If you happen to be in condo, you, know, you can show you know, sort of a, a condo uh, or others, okay? Are we almost there to 100%? Maybe some of them have uh, decided to have uh, siesta. I think. <laughs> but as I was saying, uh, probably 80% of our population stays in HDB. Okay? And uh, <clears throat> I guess for those of us here are represented, you know, I, I guess being sort of a, uh, we, we are slightly uh, off you know, the means uh, because of, of our educational level. Uh, that much I can, I can draw a conclusion from. Uh, you can engage me afterwards you know, in the discussion time as to whether you know, what I'm saying is, is valid. Okay. 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 79%. Dear, dear, are you able to see the poll? Yeah, I, I see uh, 98 have pulled out of 124, which is okay, 78 good. All right, you can see it. Okay, good. So 60% yeah. HDB, like you can see. Yeah, so that's why I say that maybe okay. because of uh, the fact that we have uh, more educated uh, this, uh, yes. population here. Okay, mm. not so representative of the whole country. Okay, okay we'll end up polling here. But as I say, it's just to... Uh, give a, a breather to myself and also to uh, uh, generate some, some uh, uh, not a monologue, but a dialogue. Okay. Thanks for your feedback. Okay. So for those of you who <coughs> are living in HDB flats, you can actually see for yourself here, uh, on the where you stand in terms of the size of the new town, okay? Okay, this is another slide from Teolida. He actually sort of uh, captured you know, the number of flats completed over the years. And I make a markdown here to show the milestone of HDB sort of uh, completing 1 million units uh, in 2016, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a big achievement uh, to have uh, so many units of people. And in Singapore, you know, living in public housing is not something that uh, we want to shy off. In fact, we are very proud of you know, the standard of uh, public housing that we have achieved. Okay, next I'll touch on special developments. Okay, this one is just for PR, although I'm no more in 
in HDB. Yeah? <clears throat> but just to tell you, you know, this is what we do. We are the public housing authority. We provide affordable housing of high quality. We also help to build communities. Okay, that is in 1997, 2000, there was a slight change and probably there's further refinement uh, over time. Okay, and <clears throat> through the years, we have actually have um, many achievements and accolades, uh, both locally as well as worldwide. This, uh, this is in 1997 when uh, we achieved the Singapore Quality Award uh, for uh, public housing. Uh, the citation is that, you know, is that achievement and dedication in providing world-class housing, okay? This is a claim that we can make. So next I just share with you about this one. I've shared a bit already about East Coast Park, okay? <clears throat> As I say, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's, I won't say killing two birds, uh, not very good, not idiom to use, but we definitely uh, managed to get <clears throat> uh, uh, we managed to do the earthworks uh, for this uh, our new towns like Bedok and Tampanese and Marine Parade, and we are able to use it for housing. And at the same time, we also created you no know, parks uh, for you no know, the leisure activities of our this uh, people, which I would say that is <clears throat> is really something that is priceless. Uh, okay, so. The East Coast Park, in fact, is the largest you know, this, uh, uh, park in Singapore at 185 hectares, okay? built entirely on reclaimed land. Okay? Uh, and the beach is protected by breakwaters, which you know, is, they are all designed and built by, you know, and, and constructed by contractors, but it's supervised by HDB. Okay? Next, I'll touch on is Bishan Amokyo Park, which <coughs> I'm both involved in as well as stay near by too. So this, uh, you may have heard about it, you know, in the last session by you know, King Guan, right? Uh, this was how the Kalang River looks like before it was transformed to a natural, this uh, waterway, okay? <clears throat> and you know, this is, if instantly, you know, there is a cost benefit analysis done by NUS, huh? You can Google it and find that <clears throat> the cost of the ABC, you know, waterway in Pisha Amokyo costs about 75 million. But the NUS you know, study showed that <clears throat> uh, the, you know, the, the intrinsic sort of value that you can get from it uh, is about 104 million a, a year. Mind you, this is 75 million is a one off, but you know, this 104 million is per year, okay? And <clears throat> I think for those of you who make use of this part, you can understand why, okay? And <clears throat> remember I said, you know, this is it's a, like a flood retention pond, huh? Huh? when you when you remove the, the you know, concrete you know, banks of the canal, okay? You notice that this is a sculpture, right? You know, that is built, right? And <clears throat> here again, you see it here. And <clears throat> residents, you know, when it is not flooded, right? You know, can actually come here to uh, feed the fishes. In fact, <clears throat> uh, I'm living near to Bishan Park and uh, this is the same spot that I used to bring my grandchildren here to, to feed fishes also. Okay. So this is another view of the bridge across the park and this is a nighttime view of the park. Okay, this is uh, the 2010, uh, 50th anniversary of HDB, in which the Pinnacle Duxton, it's a 50 story residential development sector, was built. Right? <clears throat> Again, it has uh, world acclaim. All seven connected towers are collectively the world tallest public residential housing. And <clears throat> the two sky gardens is uh, the longest uh, sky garden. All, all seven blocks are connected at both the 50th story and 25th story. So kudos again to the developers of this uh, project. I think uh, Lao Juming, I think who, whom I saw just now, uh, is uh, uh, one of the uh, so-called you know, initiator of this, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Okay. So this is another view at night. You know? Okay. This is 
no? name of view. Okay. Okay, the last no, iconic no, feature that I want to uh, share with you is the My Waterway Pongo. It's a uh, Singapore first man-made waterway by HDB was completed in October 2011. Okay. So it marks the realization of Pongo 21 plus no, vision. Okay. And again, it has won no, this uh, international acclaim uh, for environmental sustainability. And <clears throat> this is another view of nighttime. No? And these are some of the interesting no, facts or trivia. It's 4.2 km long, costing 250 million. And the waterway can hold 500,000 cubic meters, uh, which is about 200 no, Olympic size pool. Okay. Okay. This is a wetlands no, associated with this project. Okay. Okay, the next lab, New Smart Towns Tengah. Uh, this one I just showed to you. It's not for me to, it's, it's for uh, the people, uh, the students who are watching this, uh, uh, to, to whom we will hand over the baton uh, to, uh, to be future ready, to make this future ready uh, uh, new towns. Okay. So now I'll just uh, quickly touch on the main upgrading program, which I was also very much involved in. Uh, uh, when I was in the building and project management department, okay? Okay, these slides that I'm showing you were first done in 19, this, uh, <coughs> uh, 98, I think. Hmm. So I'll go through this once very quickly, okay? It's government long-term program to improve flats, okay? Government ways of channeling the surpluses back to people. Well, all of us know that the government is, is very <coughs> uh, careful not to have handouts. No? So they always channel the, the money through subsidies, okay? Until last year, 2020, when they gave us no, five uh, uh, budgets, no? okay? But before that, no, it's always through subsidies, uh, like in, in the main upgrading programs and other forms of uh, subsidies, okay? So before any main upgrading can take place, right? 75% of people must vote for it. Flat owners will share costs with government and flat owners need not relocate during upgrading. This sharing cost is very important right? because it shows commitment. Right? Because if not, then if you give everything free, then people will not appreciate. And I think the most challenging thing is that the flat owner need not relocate during upgrading, okay? So this is how it looks like no? after upgrading, before upgrading, okay? Okay. <clears throat> so if you look carefully, right, you'll notice that you know, all these white portions, uh, okay, are the added no? space adding item, all right? As compared to what was no? before. Huh? In the before upgrading, you'll find that you know, this is the area of the kitchen. So they have added one more room huh, onto the kitchen. Okay. So these are some of the things that I'll quickly just cover. They will appreciate in value, right? So again, the government is spending about 20 billion, <coughs> right? Carol under two separate, no? Phases, no? okay. <clears throat> okay, suffice it for me to say that you know, after the HB flats is built, right, no government or developer uh, will go back you know, and add value to your unit uh, by spending the money in which you only need to co-share a fraction, or something like you know, from, from 10% to you no know, to 25%. Okay. So this is something which you know. I think you will only see it no? uh, here in Singapore, okay? So these are the criteria, okay? Majority of three rooms it must be part of a continuous precinct and no? there must be a good spread no? of public housing, okay? Selection criteria, no? right? It's more, no? Uh, for for community bonding and you know, social you no know, this uh, <coughs> uh, wellness uh, okay 
So as I said, this started in January 91, right? <clears throat> so no, as I said, these slides were, were done no, in, I think, 1998. Uh, this is something that I extracted, no? okay? So <clears throat> when it was all completed, 130,000 units were, were ben benefited from it, no? okay? <clears throat> so uh, take note of these two budget, no? based on a fixed cost of 42,000 for standard package, 67,200 for a standard plus package, which includes the SAI, okay, the space adding item. Okay. This is how it looks like. Okay. So cost sharing, uh, maybe it's clearer here. <clears throat> so as I say, you know, the unshaded part is by government. Okay. The <clears throat> Lessees only share a small portion of you know, what they have to pay for. This is for a standard package, okay? And if it's a standard plus, that means for the SAI, uh, they pay more, okay? So there's two, two periods, uh, pre-polling, which is more political or more social, right? <clears throat> And then construction phase is where we take over, okay? So we have what we call a precinct working committee, okay? In which the advisor is the chairman, okay? These are some of the things that they do, you know, during pre-polling, uh, they have exhibition, you no, know, right? Show you mock-up, uh, grading, these are some of the pictures, okay? And the construction phase is where we take over, okay? So during this period, we, the HDB project manager is the chairman uh, and the advisor, you know, uh, is, is playing an advisor role, okay? So this is uh, within the flat. This is the things that we do within the flat, within the block, within the precinct, okay? So I'll, I'll just spend a bit more time on within the flat now, because as I say, you know, this is something which I believe is, is really uh, uh, one of its kind now in the world, okay? So we, for within the flat, we upgrade the existing toilet and bathroom, waterproof and retiling bathroom and fill line for new wall tiles to ceiling height, replacement of squat pan with the discipline, Replacement existing aluminum door with PVC. Okay. So this is these are the, some of the pictures showing what we do. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a uh, challenging and interesting part, and that is we do replace now the sewer pipes, no? all right, uh, the soil pipes within the units. And this is where the coordination uh, is uh, paramount. We have to do it, no? <clears throat> this, uh, uh, you can say, you know, consecutively and <clears throat> uh, collectively, you know, with the units, okay? These are the other things that we do, okay? Okay, for space adding item, Okay, I just spent just a little bit more time on this one. Okay, just bear with me. <clears throat> okay, it's, it's very challenging for, for both technical as well as no, social uh, basis, okay? Technical in that we are doing it within very confined space and <clears throat> we you know, have to you know, do you know, this uh, jack pile you know, in order to reduce noise, you know, right? <clears throat> And you know, then we have to actually you know, uh, stack up the, the individual SAI. You know? it's, like, it's like Lego. Eh? Okay? And the challenge is that you know, we are actually you know, putting up you know, something that is about 20 years difference in, in age or eh? uh, quality. That means most of the flats that we do the uh, adding of SAI is about 20 years old. And the quality, uh, <clears throat> the precision quality at that time is not as good as nowadays, okay? 
and <clears throat> and therefore, you know, the challenge is really how to be able to keep you know, uh, the units uh, to be able to be aligned you know, uh, for you know, the stacking of you know, more than you know, 10 stories you know, for the flats that we are, we are, we are building you know, or, or upgrading. Instantly, you know, <clears throat> again for the records, you know, uh, a team went to France you know, to actually study how other countries do it. You know? And what they learned is that actually in other countries like in France, they only talk in terms of low rise flats. You know? And you're talking about you know, just adding individual balconies you know, to the, their windows, their French windows, but they're all distinct you know, items. Whereas for us, we actually build them like Lego no? upon one another, okay? And then the next challenge and besides a technical partner is <clears throat> that we give ourselves 12 working days uh, in which we enter into people's units, okay? And half of it is for the toilet, which I mentioned to you just now. It's a challenge because we have to you know, construct the sewer pipe or, <clears throat> or or rather the, you know, the soil pipes, you know, right, through the units. So we need to actually coordinate you know, between the units. And when we send out letters to the, the units, right, you know, we have to give them notice that we are coming in on such and such a date. And this is the challenge, you know, right? I think many of you who have, uh, uh, well, you no, know, got experience with renovation contractors, you know that, you no. Know, this is not something that is easy to, you know, uh, our brother is often a pain in the neck because they don't keep the timing. But for us, it is precision you know, because we have to do it you know, sequentially. That means if we tell you know, the units from 10 story to six story that we're coming on this date, we have to come in on this date. You know, there's no two way about it. So we built into our contracts, you know, very hefty fines, you know, for failure <clears throat> and also require the contractor to have a standby team just in case there's any sort of a mishap okay so this is how we make sure that we we keep our promise of course if you're talking about COVID time now I think this is even more challenging okay <laughs> <clears throat> so this is when the, when it's connected they, they break the wall uh, to connect to the unit uh, do the ceiling connection, okay? Do the tiling of the units, okay? And do a fix up the windows, <clears throat> and voila! This is how it looks like, you know? uh, a new you know, room, you know? especially it's appreciated by three-room flat uh, households, okay? So both within the block, <clears throat> these are things that they do, okay? I'll just go through it quickly. Uh, uh, we do new lifts, no? we speeding of corridors, no? better design letter box. Okay. Okay, again, we have to scrap the corridors as well as the white deck because of the quality of the work no? 20 years ago as compared to today. For works within the precinct, we do pavilion, lingways, playgrounds, or porch, you know, outdoor landscape area and sitting. We also built uh, from surface car park to multi story car park. <clears throat> so you can see it huh? again, just to show a bit of detail, this is before. So we add, no? this again is very challenging for four room flats. No? We have a, a additional room here, but for the five roomers, no? we can only build no? an extension of their living room by a small margin only no? because of the technical constraints. Okay. So this program was officially completed in April 2012, costing 3.3 billion, benefiting 130,000 households over 22 years. Hmm? Uh, and I can say that I'm proud to be, you know, sort of uh, involved in it in some way. Okay. 
So <clears throat> these are the latest no? uh, from that I've extracted that from the main upgrading, right? We are doing upgrading, even the upgrading sort of uh, you know, plan, okay? So there's main upgrading, you know, there is interim upgrading, you know, there's lift upgrading, right? There's also, you know, uh, uh, interim upgrading to, you know, uh, HIP1, HIP2, ease, you know, neighborhood renewal uh, programs, okay? We stopped doing MUP because <coughs> the, the cost is very expensive huh, for us to, to do so. Okay, okay. <coughs> let me quickly go through with you this project management MS project template. Huh? So if, uh, when I was in BBMD, I've developed this template huh, to help us monitor progress and make payments. Okay, It has the ability to monitor with respect to original baseline proposed schedule, which most of the time, huh, huh, if you will find you know, this uh, schedules from, from contractors, huh, they, they are not able to give you an original baseline as compared to their ongoing current baseline, okay? And we have built in the, you know, these are <coughs> macros to identify delays, okay? And we also generate a unique S-curve for budgeting and payment, okay? So this is how it looks like. I won't go, I won't so much time on it in the interest of time, just to show you that <coughs> you can see down here, the system can actually show delays, triggers and variance and most importantly, right, it can help you to monitor, like for example, in this case, uh, the blue one is the actual, right? It is delayed, right? So if you are aware of it, right, you can put in the manpower so that in, you know, in time to come, you can actually catch up. So this is what you can do, okay? <clears throat> so let me just end off by saying that, you know, how do we look to the future? <clears throat> uh, by that, what I'm trying to say is that I'm not encouraging that we do uh, navel gazing here, okay? Meaning that <clears throat> I'm not just sharing with you to, to, uh, uh, to have laurels over our head, no? But rather, <clears throat> I want you all to consider, you know, uh, how the, the past you know, can actually help you uh, to look to the future, okay? Uh, <clears throat> for those of my years, I mean, my classmates, and we have probably spent, you know, uh, four decades of our, of our life working, right? For myself, you know, I, <clears throat> I served 44 years in, in one organization, okay? Or, albeit in three different this, uh, uh, departments, uh, civil engineering, building and project management and you know, housing management uh, development, okay? Uh, <clears throat> I think the, no, the new normal is different. Uh, uh, I was told that <clears throat> Going through three jobs in a lifetime, right, is quite normal. However, uh, I would not know what the new normal will look like. Okay, so as I say, you know, learning from the past in excellent preparation for the task of the future. So I hope that this short one hour, you know, can help you to reflect on it and you know, consider what the new normal will be like. Okay, uh, again something for you to, you know, to take heart in, <clears throat> right? What I read in this week's uh, newspapers, uh, as well as elsewhere, is that there are actually more than half of jobs are yet to be invented. No? Uh, for us, traditionally in the past, uh, we only know of uh, civil structural engineering, you know, mechanical engineering, but even in your organization now, or rather in your you see now you have got civil engineering and sustainability, no? right? <clears throat> uh, so there are new jobs all over, okay? We also talk in terms of the 3P program, venture capital startup, okay? And in the straight times on the 18th of May, right? You have what we call the Emerging Stronger Task Force. And I think the government is doing a good job in, in having all this, right? Uh, because from this emerging stronger task force reports, uh, they have come with six shifts, right? Nine alliances and five recommendations. <clears throat> and I especially highlighted this tool to show you that <clears throat> from all this, you know, like digitization, you know, renewal focus on sustainability, uh, agri-tech, you know, edu-tech, you know, robotics, you know, uh, these <clears throat> are the jobs of the future. 
So be prepared uh, to, you know, to go beyond uh, our, <clears throat> our normal, you know, this uh, frame of mind. Uh, and I think that that's what we need to do. Okay. So in the same newspaper that day, right, you have got you not know, AI, <clears throat> you got you not know, this uh, you know, agri-tech, you know? uh, Lim Chu Kang is going to be uh, the next you know, <clears throat> big area for agri-tech, you know? and also solar farm you know, to energize Singapore. Okay, <clears throat> Okay, my last slide, you know, something for you to take away. You know? uh, this has, I guess, you know, something to do with you know, uh, how we should look at life, right? How long will we live? And this is a book. Huh? I put it here so that you can, you can easily find this in the National Library. You don't have to buy it. It's called The 100 Year Life by two professors, huh? Andrew J. Scott and Linda Grant from the London School of Economics. It also has a diagnostic huh? to help you to see how ready you are 100 year life. Okay? And <clears throat> what they say down there is that there will be big changes in jobs in how we work, retirement, can you imagine if you work, I mean, if you live under 100 years, huh, can you afford huh, to stop work at age 60 and hope that your, your savings huh, can last for 40 years? Okay? Government pensions, finances, HR, and health insurance. Okay? And <clears throat> I think we have just been told that you know, the World Economic Forum you know, this, uh, has uh, cancelled their meeting, but in 2016, right, the World Economic Forum uh, commented on this book, uh, and they have a guy who wrote, this guy is called Peter Warham. Uh, we all will live 100 years and we are not at all prepared for it. Uh, and this is why he says so. Uh, on average, uh, people today die when they're about 80. 30 years ago, the average person died at 74. 60 years ago, it was 66. And 100 years ago, it was 56. That means our parents' generation died earlier. We live to 80. Uh, our future generation will live to about 100, okay? So, and he says that there are medical reasons to show, but we have been able to control TB. So if we can survive cancer, dementia, Alzheimer, and hopefully COVID, uh, then the possibility of living to 100 is there, okay? <clears throat> so the, the authors is saying that, you know, the most important thing is that if you have 20 extra years, uh, added to your life. Uh, how should you look at life? Uh? You don't look at it only when you reach 80, but you should look at it uh, that you have an extra day every week or an extra three to four hours every day. So you should look at it in terms of work. Work means what? No? That means unlike myself, which I only spend my years all in one organization, the book actually ends, you know, says that we would probably be you know, having different jobs at different times. With periods of rest, okay. In terms of finances, no, you should have a large, you should save a large amount, maybe thirty percent, so that you will last no, your hundred years. And in terms of relationship, right, to really you know spend that time no, with your family and friends, no? okay. So this is what I have. Sorry for going a bit over. I just leave me to thank you for your attention. Okay, over to you, David. Okay, hey, thanks, uh, Engineer Tia, for uh, an enlightening talk. I think uh, you have given uh, broad strokes, right, on the key national developments, right, both, yeah, I think, in just not the landscape, the skyscrapers and so on, it's just also the reclamation. I think, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed with the various statistics and the achievements that have been done especially the idea of a world-class housing award. I, I think HDB deserves that. And also appreciate the various upgrading programs, particularly the, the way the programs have been executed. Now, I think we, what we have right now is that we have, actually we've gone past the time and I hope that uh, you know, you, all the participants can just remain for maybe another five, 10 minutes for a few uh, minutes of question and answers, maybe five, 10 minutes of Q&A. We can take about maybe two, three questions and uh, use the, you can use the chat feature to post your questions or you raise your hands, right, to speak so that, uh, you know, we can call upon you. 
and then please indicate your organization. All right, so uh, let's do that. Ah, uh, Singaporeans are always very shy, even in this. <laughs> right, maybe, I, I usually maybe, don't get good. Maybe I can try to attempt to answer an earlier question by Tan Yang Jay, right? Which uh, is a direct you know, message to me. He oh, said that okay, can go ahead. Sorry. Did HDB yeah. have SAI in mind initially, or was it something that came up along the way? <clears throat> uh, well, it's, it's part of our planning then. Okay, to add value, basically, when we did the main upgrading, this uh, <clears throat> project is to add value. Uh, it's, it's something very challenging, something that uh, <clears throat> I wasn't there in the initial years, right? So that's why I have the caveat you know, uh, just now in my first slide to say that I you know, may not have all the answers, especially since I'm retired now, I, <laughs> I, uh, I don't represent HDBs, but... <clears throat> Suffice is to say that you know, we we manage it, you no, know, and I think hundred and thirty thousand know, households benefited from this program. You know. uh, that's the main upgrading program. Besides, of course, we do have other uh, programs as well. Uh, following that, you know. okay. Any other questions? Okay, there's a question here. Uh, would we ever see mega structure taller than 500 meters in Singapore? Uh, Engineer Tia? <laughs> uh, I must say that I'm not in a position to, to answer that. Uh, I've got other more distinguished uh, structural engineers in the midst who may be able to you know, give the answers. Yeah, I maybe, maybe I can add on. Yeah, yeah. Leong, yeah. yeah. Singapore now actually have the uh, maximum height allowance uh, for building is up to 300 meters. Simply yeah. because of the air path requirement. Uh, yeah. No? I, country, I, I think so. yeah, so our uh, air path control actually stipulated this condition no more than 300 meters so far. Okay, so 500 meters is uh, not allowed at this moment. Yes. Okay, thanks, uh, uh, Kim Chong, for putting uh, uh, contributing. Now, there's also another question. Um, what can we say about the recent failure? I think this is quite uh, uh, quite a situation. A uh, failure of some pneumatic waste conveyance of some uh, HDB estate. Yeah, yeah. Once again, I, I call upon my you know first slight caveat that I don't have all the answers, uh, especially since I'm not no. Uh, in HDB anymore. I mean, definitely this is one of the challenges, okay? And uh, well, uh, I think HDB is not <coughs> afraid of uh, challenges. But also one thing I must say that you know, in HDB, we, we often do not want to be the first mover of, of technologies, partly because of the number of units uh, that we cover, okay? Because if there's any, uh, I mean, if you want to be first mover, then you must you know, also take you know, the risk of things do going wrong. Yeah. So in that respect, I think generally speaking, in HDB, you know, uh, at least during my time, uh, we were quite conservative. Okay. But yet again, as I say, just now remember, and I shared about, you no, know, an institution is but the length and breadth of one man, right? <clears throat> So who knows? I mean, there may come a CEO who, who feels very strongly that you know, there needs to be some other <clears throat> challenges that they want to uh, overcome and, and excel in, and they may want to pursue some of this. You know? And I think the pneumatic base, you know, this are convinced, is, is one of the things that they want to you know, advance because of certain this are, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, national constraints uh, in terms of manpower uh, in you know, collecting waste and, and so on. Okay. Uh, there are challenges. No? And uh, as I said, these are some of the uh, 
added insights that I can give, uh, but I cannot say that I have the answers for that question. Um, I got one question. Um, uh, Leon, uh, will will um, HDB actually move to this idea of PPBC in a large way? Uh, again, they're very sensitive. No, this is a question. <laughs> I think uh, some people think is that that is the panacea, but I think in recent times when when you have got COVID and when you have got no, this uh, movement control, no, you find that, uh, well, you know, the whole equation no, uh, changes. And I think many of our contractors no, find it difficult to, to no, sort of, uh, the supply chain uh, are being very badly affected. Mm. Okay. Mm. Okay, I, I think if, if I, I'm, I'm, I add also that I think if we move into that direction, there'll be a big change in the, the players that are usually playing with, uh, I mean, helping, I mean, uh, building HDB flats. I think there may be a big change there also, right? Because the, it, the, the skill set for PBVC is a bit different. Th that is a question here from another person. Uh, if you could go back in time, what is that one thing you will change and further improve for HDB? I think it's a very personal question for you. <laughs> well, as I said just now, right? You know, uh, remember I, I spoke about you know, you know, an organization is but the length and breadth of one man. So <clears throat> I think that uh, it's, it's not something that I can say that I can change <clears throat> that will improve HDB. In fact, I, I came across a saying <clears throat> by old monk who says that, you know, uh, who, who attempts to change everything nice, you know, to change the, his family, his, his town, his you know, nation and the world, and finally realized that the only thing he can change is himself. And if he can change himself, right, then he will have a bearing on you know, his family and the family will have impact on the, uh, county and the county uh, impact on the nation and then the world. So for myself, I, I just want to humbly state that, you know, uh, <clears throat> well, I can only say that, you know, the change is for myself to continue to improve, right? And <clears throat> unless I'm in the position to, to lead a company, you know, uh, I don't think that, you know, what I say, you know, uh, would matter much. Now. So what you say, David, is right now, it's, it's not something for me to, you know, to say that, you know, what I changed would, would change the whole organization. Okay, okay. Uh, I, okay <laughs> I think we'll take, we'll take some more questions here. Um, since they're quite, well, they're now more and more coming in. I hope it's not going to be sensitive for everybody. Okay, let me just see. Um, uh, I think the, the question here about old HDB flat um, backed by government, uh, I think in Yishun, I think that would be government's question. I'm not going to yeah, ask that. I think all these policy uh, matters not yeah. for us to answer. So. Okay, I think these are all not correct. Uh, no, I think we shouldn't get you to answer this. Um, I think this one would be quite interesting. All right, I've noticed that new HDB nowadays seem to have a very typical design which lacks much unique architectural styles as seen in the 1990s flat. Uh, how do you think we can balance between building efficiency versus going for the external looks? Uh, I don't know. I, 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 I differ a little bit from this person's question. Right? I, I do see the changes. We are no more blocks type of thing and now they spread out in different footprints. Mm. So I'm, I'm pretty, you know, uh, happy with what is going on, but mm. I don't know, miss, maybe engineer Tia can add further to this. No, I, I agree with you that, <clears throat> remember I said that we are corporatized, we are now just a, a housing authority and you know, we, 
you know, we take the design from different consultants. So uh, it will not be just one design or rather from one source on it. Lah. That means that we, we, we have different consultants doing different this are pricing. Uh, but uh, yeah, same time for functionality, right? I think there's a certain sort of a balance that needs to be kept uh, in order for us to keep the balance between functionality and aesthetics. Uh. And I think nowadays, you know, if we consider all the other factors like, you know, this uh, sustainability in terms of, uh, you know, uh, how we should you know, balance between you know, the environmental you know, efficiencies and all that. You know? uh, frankly, you know, sort of, uh, not that much room to play about. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think uh, there's something that maybe I, I, I just add that uh, I, I'm very impressed for with the compliment. The way that, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, they've done beautifully, it's true. And I, I think uh, I, I, I would like to add also that HDB has actually moved really beyond basic housing and into the idea of even integrating with parks and so on and, and, and making the whole development more thematic. I, I'm very impressed with that, that they have changed and they have brought in more consideration into their amenities and so on. And also um, taking, I, I would say taking, uh, sometimes you know, they even take existing uh, uh, occupants in mind because like a recent uh, one on very close to, I mean, uh, about the, the, they wanted to, to develop a, a, a park and then to remove some of the trees and so on. But the, the residents are very careful about that. And, uh, and, and I think that's very important, I think. And I think that that has moved us one more step I mean, up the fact that we are no more just a basic housing type of needs. What do you think, uh, uh, De Jong? Yeah, I, I think that uh, definitely we need to you know, consider all this. You know? And <clears throat> that's why you know, the, the you know, design you know, so far are definitely more challenging than in the past when HDB is just uh, slabs of, uh, I mean, you know, just slabs of uh, housing uh, facing north south so as to you know get the best orientation to the sun right so <clears throat> there are yeah. many more things to to look at uh, uh, including you know uh, from the you know, this uh, society at large and <clears throat> also you know recognizing the you know, smallness of our size uh, is is really a, a big challenge uh. that's why I say in my talk that you know what I try to do is just to, you know, to show the, the audience that <clears throat> we have, uh, you know, we have done what we can you know, to do well, and we hope that you know, the <clears throat> the next lab by you know, our you know, this uh, new engineers you know, and <clears throat> new entrants into the the this uh, workforce you know, would be able to carry the torch. You know, Further, no? mm -hmm. we have we have this question by you know uh, my uh, former boss now now Chu Ming. Can you talk about sustainability challenge here and what can young engineers do? I think he he will be in a better position to to talk about it uh, <laughs> since he was also involved in the Pongo Waterway also. I think, <laughs> but anyway, time doesn't allow us to to talk too much about this. Uh. Okay, but maybe you can ask Chu Ming yeah. to do a separate mm -hmm. talk on this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think Jung Ming is trying to encourage young people that there's a lot more to be done in Singapore. Uh, we, we, the civil engineering is not, has not ended. There is now the incorporation of sustainability. Yeah, that's uh, right. Jung Ming has also added this, that pneumatic refuse chute issue is a hiccup due to bad and irresponsible behavior of renovation yeah. contractors. Mm. Maybe that, that's, that's also uh, something that's true there. Right. Okay. Mm. Uh, I think we will we'll end here. I think uh, it, uh, the engineer Tia's uh, talk has already you know, triggered a lot of uh, uh, discussion and a very, very, uh, I mean, I think it's exciting uh, things here. I, and uh, I think his message is also very clear. I think civil engineering has really played a very large role in shaping the, the landscape of Singapore in our formative years. And uh, what has gone on now is that we have moved 
past that. And now we have actually moved venture into what we call an equality living, I think, with, with the way that uh, we have integrated a lot of developments. And even now, venturing even to new smart towns and so on, I think there is a, a, a positive step there. And I mean, so not many governments in, in the world actually would give such thoughts to public housing. And I think uh, uh, HDB, you know, representing the intentions of the government has done a, a great deal in this. And I, and I think the public should appreciate that. There are a few takeaways that I thought would be good um, to think about. And what do we do when we have done just the, the basics already? We have met the nation building. I think the need to be forward looking, there needs to be changed. And we see that HDB has made organizational and functional changes. And I think HDB is not afraid they are there to venture, venture into, into integrated developments, uh, venture into new smart towns. Now, even with the pneumatic uh, truth systems, uh, which, which if it works, will, will really alleviate a lot of, of, of things. And um, I think there is also the need to challenge our younger generation to on with our nation building, uh, embrace new challenges that, uh, that is being posed to us like sustainability, climate change and all that. And how would that shape our, our housing? So um, I think with that, um, I think we again want to thank uh, Engineer Tia for, for giving such a, a, a good enlightening and, and broad scope of uh, all the developments of our, our nation. From, uh, for over four, 40 years. And I think also I, we would like to thank all of you really. I mean, uh, those of you who have signed up and, and came in and participated with us. I uh, thank you so much. And uh, we'll just keep in touch again. And I hope we can meet up again in the future. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just want to say thank you to all my friends, no? ex-colleagues as well as no? <clears throat> others no? who have joined in this uh, webinar for their support and uh, for keeping in touch. Uh, keep safe and uh, stay healthy. Yeah, okay. Let's all uh, again thank uh, engineer Tia. I wish we could clap, but we could not clap. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> right, uh, you know that we all appreciate what you have done for us. Um, so, all right, uh, keep safe and all of us, and uh, we'll see you the next time. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you, Engineer Tia, and thank, thank you, uh, Prof. David Chua. Yeah, bye here. Yeah. Thanks, then. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, Peggy has sent out something to everyone about keeping in touch with us. There's uh, this uh, uh, graduate certificate programs. And also, I believe, uh, I think, just keep in touch with Peggy. She has yep. all the talks okay. and everything online and all that. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.